about a kind of country. You see, Loina, Loina, mm. uh, I didn't know his boyfriend. He was paid by his boss to come to New Zealand. So he's got to work yeah. his time off. And therefore he can't work for anyone else. Oh. If he goes and uh, work for someone else, and his boss got no control over him, you get deported back. Oh. And uh, uh, Junior knows all about that thing, and he's going to work and fix uh, that, uh, so he can get a permanent uh, resident away. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. Now then, where, what did you want me to do? Well, are we, are we recording? Okay, Kirana everybody, this is uh, Pop, my father, 82 years old. Um, I want to talk about um, the immigration coming from the Cook Islands to New Zealand and then eventually from, well in Dad's case, from Wellington to Boronga. Uh, so, Dad, when, when did you arrive in New Zealand? And I arrived here on the 28th, uh, sorry, 20, 22nd of August. Right in the middle of winter. Right in the middle of winter. And Some, before, so. before, before I heard uh, uh, that, because all of us on the plane are young people. Yeah. Uh, I was 17 then. Sent over here to get more opportunities? Yeah. Before, before that, I went to Makatea to earn some money. Yeah. It's an island in the Tahiti group. Tahiti and uh, Makatea is called Digging Phosphate. And um, uh, uh, the wages I got from there was seven pounds a month. Hmm. That's it. Seven pound a month. Well, I left five, five pound bag at home in the bank and took, well, that's how I organized my my one. Yeah. And two pound for spending money. But when I got to Makadea, you can ex earn extra by working, digging for us, what do we get by, by the ton? Hmm. By the ton. And if you uh, work more ton, you the more you pay, you get extra. Yeah. yeah. So from there, Dad, to Wellington? Hang on, when uh -huh. I get back to Rotonga. My father used to work for the, the man who runs the airport in Rotonga. His name is McDonald. And... Uh, when he found out from his office that I was coming to New Zealand and he came to see me, I have booked my plane. Uh, right here. Yeah. He came to see me one day and he said, You're the one who's going to New Zealand? I said, Yeah. And uh, he said, You better get ready by next week. Next week because. The airport is going to be closed, they're going to turn it into an international airport. Oh. Before it was a small airport, only a small plane to land on it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I got a note from the uh, airport that um, I got a room. So yeah. Got, got on the plane and flew away. Came to Auckland. Yeah. Because you weren't allowed to speak te reo at school, Dad? You were speaking We weren't allowed to speak in English? At school, no. You're not allowed to speak your own language at school. What yeah. the problem is, my parents can't speak one English, word of English. Yeah. And, uh, so for instance, one day the teacher said, well, this is what we're going to, subject we're going to talk about tomorrow. And so I go home, but at home, I speak back in my own language and forget about the thing. And the next day, I went back to school and the, the teacher said, All right, what did you learn about the subject we discussed yesterday? And I stood up and I went, Oh, oh, I've forgotten all about it, you yeah. see? Yeah. 
go up the front and bite the <laughs> wall and stand there. <laughs> That's a punishment. Yeah. Yeah. Not only me, there one or two other kids who didn't, who forgotten it. So yeah. when you flew here, because I know you told me you flew through Samoa? Yeah, uh, we, we uh, land in, the plane takes only 12 passengers. Hmm. And the, the pilot and the co-pilot, that's it. And uh, we land in Rutaki for two hours to refill when we land here. <laughs> I was so thirsty. I look around the house, you know, like any house you see, there's a tap outside. And I look around, there's no tap. And I saw someone standing all across the field, across the field, a man standing. I walk up to him and I ask him, is there any water around here? And he said, no. The best thing he says is to go back in the building and terminal and ask if we can have a cup of tea or something. Huh. But as I walk back, I walk around, back around the other side of the house yeah. and there's a woman sitting down with his daughter having a meal. Yeah. And they had some coconut and she asked me to sit down and have a meal with him. Cool. I sat down and have a little bit of something and had a an, new. Yeah. Yeah. And then they call that, we're ready to take off. And we flew to Samoa. Stayed there for overnight. And from there we flew to Fiji and stayed there for now one night. But while I was over there, the day we landed in Fiji, I went in the shop, look around in the shop, you know, just to see what they got there yeah, in, in Fiji. Fiji. Yeah. Yeah. And I found something, I wanted to buy it. It's a, uh, what do you call it? Um, the point of the plow. Yeah. yeah the, the part that dicks in the ground. Yeah. The point. Our one at home was broken. We couldn't get any part for it. Yeah. yeah. I saw this thing, I asked the owner and she said something like $12 for it. So I bought it and I told him to send it to right. back home. Yeah. And we came over here. We landed in Finuapai. The one in Auckland and uh, Mangere wasn't built then. Yeah. 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 So what was the first thing you noticed about being here, Dad? Obviously the cold? Yeah. yeah. While we were in the air, I felt the cold. Yeah. Different but, from the yeah. It was, the thing is, how I passed 11 in the morning, I can still remember it, the co-pilot came out and said, there's the New Zealand, way ahead. Yeah. But the thing is, I don't know where, what part of New Zealand did we came over. Yeah. yeah, because the plane flew on and then we saw the town, a town, a lot of buildings, a lot of houses, and then we go further up, just a house here and there, that's a farming, and then another town. I got a funny video, we came to South Island. I'm not sure. Come over the South Island. Yeah, I come over the South Island yeah. from Norfolk Island, which is part because we stay in Norfolk Island for a couple of hours for refuel and then we came over there. But seeing the side of New Zealand to and how we found, we discovered New Zealand at half past eleven and we landed at half past four in the afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Half past four in Finland. <laughs> That's how slow that plane is. Uh, maybe your father was lost. Yeah. <laughs> I, I told you something funny while we are you know, over the sea. And you look down and you, it, it's 31 waves. And look at me, that wave is going faster than us. Yeah, <laughs> because of height. I think, yeah. yeah. You watch a certain wave and you keep your eye on it. Blow me down, that wave is going away better than faster than us, yeah. And uh, we landed in Penupai. From there we got the bus into Auckland. When we got to Auckland, family there, he coming over. Because I was meant to go to Wellington. 
Um, you know, oh. Uncle Teddy was in the mm -hmm. Dad's brother. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we wrote a letter that I'm coming, and uh, at the airport, and uh, a lot of people came on. Only two of us was lived without any, any family. Um, uh, there was an, uh, a girl, she's the Heta family, related to Arta Heta. Huh. Yeah. And uh, so had nobody she, cried, meet she you. I felt sorry for her, she cried because no one to pick her up. Yeah. And some the minister, the local minister, who called him Christian.